angry that she had to give me the default judgment. So what she did was she court ordered them to answer within 15 days to go to jail. Now she put them under duress. They did not answer on their own free will. They came back with more perjury and fraud. Then she turned around in a ruling and said, had they not answered, she would have given me the default judgment. He didn't answer because, as you know, any court will ask you, did you answer on your own free will? Did someone promise you something? Were you under duress? Now, these court judges and court cases corrupted, corrupted judges and lawyers. And if you guys are waiting on that, then just wait because that's going to come in a minute, the formalities of that. But, I mean, what, 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 what are you hoping? What are you hoping the judge or the court is going to award you? What what monetary figure? I heard you say 150 million dollars in Utah, seven million dollars. What kind of monetary figure are you looking for? 150 million dollars in Utah, 380 million dollars in California because I'm in the bankruptcy court for Terminator Four for 380 million dollars. I've already entered in that court case evidence proving that I wrote the Terminator. I even also asked for the arrest of James Cameron, which I'm in the Wall Street Journal. They wrote an article about me February the 4th, 2010. Now, I already knew the judge, the federal judge in California Bankruptcy Court, didn't have any jurisdiction over arresting Cameron, but I wanted to make a point so the media, would, the mainstream media would pick it up. Now, you know, if I made some serious allegations for him to be arrested, you know that have to be evidence in that court to prove that. Otherwise, I would go to jail. You can't waste the federal court's time. So now... All we're waiting for is the judge to make the ruling on both of the court cases, which is coming. Because the judge in Utah ruled uh, August the 11th, 2009, that the evidence that I submitted against them stands. Now, they have not put in any objections to this evidence. They have not put in any evidence, period. Now, do you think they're going to win that case? Do you think they've won that case? If I've already put in the evidence, the judge ruled that the evidence stood... And so what are we waiting on? We're waiting on a formality, right? Right. This is, We're waiting this on is a formality. One, yeah, this is one of the things that um, I don't think people really understand. But if I, could, if I could make it simple for people, the reason why the California case, the judge ruled on, which Ms. Stewart said, on, on phony evidence, which, which means none of the evidence, meaning the actual movies, ladies and gentlemen, her lawyers actually did not submit the movies as evidence. They purposely withheld that because of what the judge said. If there was if the judge could prove substantial similarity, then the judge could not grant them summary judgment. That's very important. This is why the lawyers uh, omitted that evidence. But August the eleventh, just like Ms. Stewart said, the movies, which means all the Terminator movies and all the Matrix movies, uh, and the one minute and 45 seconds showing how the theft was conducted was entered into the court. Now, because that evidence is there, means that the case is won. These have no defense because they didn't write the Matrix and the Terminator. And the only way for them to get any kind of favorable judgment would, it was to keep the truth out of the court system. But now, Ed, let, me, let, me, let, let me jump in. Let, let me jump in here for a second, because we're almost up against a commercial you. break. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold you guys over, and we're going to keep talking about this. But as an attorney, if I'm representing Warner or Fox or anywhere else like that, if I'm representing them, and I see that we cannot win in summary judgment, did they make you some kind of a... I mean, they made billions of dollars off the Matrix and the Terminator. It would seem to me that they would make you some kind of offer to just make you go away. They did offer me money. They offered me $5 million. They offered me $7 million to gag me for me not to say anything. But why would I take that if I'm a gifted writer? I'm like Michael Jordan. I'm like Tiger Woods. Talking with Sophia uh, Stewart, she is saying that she wrote The Matrix. She wrote The Terminator. She's filed the lawsuits. Uh, I posed the question about uh, her being paid off by the, the big companies. She answered that question. Now, I want to ask her about James Cameron. Everybody gives him this, you know, cakewalk in Hollywood. He wrote the Avatar and, and all these movies. What's your impression on, on, on James Cameron, uh, Sophia? James Cameron is a liar and a thief. Avatar is just a mixture of a lot of different copyrighted work. And I can send out to anybody who wants to see the proof. It's, it's, it's Disney's Pocahontas, 
Dancing with the Wolves, Fern Gully, Time Spirited, uh, Call Me Joe by a Russian writer called Paul Anderson. In, in the other book, he wrote The Avatar. Even the name is not even original. Uh, Stargate One, uh, and I can go on and on. The list is endless. And someone has given James Cameron a license to steal. And that's why he did not win the most two coveted awards, the best picture and the best director. His ex-wife, Bigelow, won both awards, and she deserved it. And he thought he was going to get Oscars for something he stole. And I know I sent out to a lot of media people that uh, James Cameron's uh, thievery. And he stole from me and Holland Ellison. We are the ones that are the co-writers for the Terminator. We are the writers for Terminator. Not James Cameron and Gail Ann Hurd. Cameron admitted to Starlog Magazine that he had stolen Holland Ellison's uh, two of his short stories, Demon uh, with the Glass Hand and The Soldier. He paid when did, Holland when Ellison did, when did he admit that? When did he admit that in the magazine? When did he admit that in the magazine? In 1985. He admitted it in Star, Starlog Magazine with uh, the lady, T. Tormain, and the guy, uh, Timothy, um, uh, I can't think of his name, uh, last name, but the, those two writers, it's all been printed up. He, he paid Holland Ellison $75,000, $5,000 to be quiet. We have the CD. We can send it to you in Holland's own word. And James Cameron perpetrated a fraud on the copyright register's office. He had invalid copyrights for the Terminator. Because when you go in and you steal from somebody, and you it's premeditated, and you admit it in a magazine article, and then Harlan Ellison catches you, come in with his lawyer Holmes, and you pay him off seventy thousand, five thousand to be quiet. That's seventy-five thousand. He's speaking about it in his own words. And that, and then the, the violations from me is to steal my work and hide it in plain sight in the Terminator movies, where everybody sees it in the, in the introduction of the Terminator is my work, and the Terminator coming down in the burnt flames, naked, without shame, lying still, which Governor Schwarzenegger portrayed, is my special effects and in, in, in character and in, in creation. Now, did, you, did, you copyright, that, did you copyright any of the stuff that you're talking about? Was your stuff I got 81, 83, and 84 copyrights. I copywritten all, copyrighted all of my work. And James Cameron is admitting into a confession in uh, and, and, uh, November the 22nd to Marley say for 60 Minutes. Marley asked him, how did you come up with the Terminator? He said, I had a dream. The Terminator is coming out of the flames. That's verbatim out of my copyrighted 81 movie treatment. And we'll send you over the, the, the stills. It's we'll send you over the, the DVD very on it. Very important to understand that James Cameron has been caught. It, it's, when you, it, it would be equivalent to an architect building a building and ask the architect, can I see your blueprints for this you know, monstrosity of a building you just made, you know, which is 80 stories high, it would be equivalent to the architect pulling out a blueprint of a 7-Eleven. James Cameron is caught because the nuclear war that everybody looks at in The Terminator is verbatim out of Miss Stewart's protected literary work that has copyrights, yet in James Cameron's own copyrights there is no post-nuclear war. Now tell me. If you wrote a story that's worth millions of dollars and it's your work, billions. why would you billions? Why would you not include in your copyright submission all of the source material? Well, there's a very good reason that he didn't do that. Because see, these white collar thieves, because this is what we're talking about, white collar thieves, when they do things, they cannot have it to be said that they took exactly what was written in Ms. Stewart's treatment. See, because it would admit, it would show the the, the actual fact. So well, let me let me let me do let, let me let me do this. I want to thank you both, and let me say this to you, Ms. Stewart. I I wholeheartedly believe you, and I'm going to have you back on the show as as this progresses. And I want to thank you, Ed, and I want to thank you, Sophia, for taking time to be with us today. The show is about to end. So I want to thank you both, and I will be having you back on, and I want to stay involved in what you got going on. I really do.
Yeah, well, we'll send you the proof over so you can see it for yourself and anybody else who want to see the proof. That's for sure. Well, I thank, you, I thank you guys, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Sophia Stewart, Ed Small, talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, Truth, all right, truth Fighters, going to close out the show. It's the Warren Bowser Show.